Chris Godinez, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon here on YouTube, and then I post it up to Facebook. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. If you feel you need a therapist, please go to Google, type in therapy, your city, psychology today will pop up, click on that, and it will have qualified therapists in your area. Also, the views and opinions stated herein are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other damn therapist for that matter. Boom, shakalaka, done. Okay, so today's topic is the psychology degree you never wanted. So when, first of all, let me, well, I'm going to be going through these books a little bit later because I'll be talking about who to trust, who not to trust, where to get information from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hello, New Mexico. Hello, India. Um, okay, so um, I will go through all of the books that I think are great and all the writers that I think are great and all of that good sort of stuff. So when we come out of an abusive relationship and this is going to be you know review for a lot of you but this is going to be brand new information for some of you so when we come out of an abusive relationship we are desperate to figure out and find out what the fuck just happened right i mean because we're sitting here going what what who what wait what you know we don't get it you know how did this person go from i love you i love you i love you to i hate you i hate you i hate you right and then we're left with all of the devalue and the discard and all of that mean horrible terrible awful stuff that we go through and so then we start our journey our search and we start educating ourselves and we start looking stuff up on the internet as it should be i mean seriously education is power and power is being educated so so when we come out of these relationships, we are desperate for any sort of information we can possibly get. Now, part of the problem is that we start gathering all of this information, not from always reputable sources. And so one person wrote in, this is why I'm doing the show. One person wrote in and said, I don't get it. I, you know, I read something and it says one thing. And then I read another article and it says the polar opposite. Who do I believe? How do I believe? What do I do? So first and foremost, I cannot stress this enough. Get with a goddamn good trauma therapist that can help navigate you through all of this stuff, that will educate you, that will send you to the right sources, that will help you figure out what is going on and why this happened and, you know, family of origin issues and inner child issues and all of this stuff. Um, I think the thing that happens to a lot of us coming out of these relationships is that we're so desperate for information that we just start grabbing information and a lot of it's not really good. So here's what I want to educate you on. You want sources that have been there, done that. I'm, seriously. I mean, it was the same thing going through and working at the homeless shelter. You know, it's kind of like, for the clinicians that hadn't had a drinking problem, hadn't had addictions, hadn't lived with an addiction issue in their house, they did not get it. And they had a really hard time relating to the population. Now, I'm not saying you have to have all these problems, but it helps. So you want somebody who really, truly gets it. And it helps if they have been there, done that. It really does. I'm not saying they have to sort of, but it does help. So realize that it's because it's like, if you have not experienced this, like if we walked out into the world, right? And I'm sure you guys have experienced this. And you said, oh my God, this is a malignant narcissist. This is a dark triad. This is what they do. People would look at us like we are smoking the damn ganja. Okay. They would because they have no concept of it. They have not experienced it. So they don't know that it's out there. And this is why dealing with flying monkeys and dealing with, you know, minor narcissists and things like that, they don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to believe that there is that kind of evil out there and that these people do behave like this and they do it on purpose. So it's really important that you get with a good therapist that has got a good grounding in trauma theory, trauma experience, knows what to do. Okay. So I, some of the stories you guys send in to me, I just seriously, I'm surprised I haven't dented a hole in the wall because sometimes I'll just feel like going <laughs> when I hear what therapists are doing and the damage they're inflicting. So you want to get a really good therapist. So I'm just going to really briefly cover all of this. Okay. When you are going for the psychology degree that you never wanted, you want to go to somebody who has been there, done that, or who is really good at studying about it, okay, and knows their shit, inside and out, backwards and forwards, in the dark, in the light, okay? So 
reputation is everything. So you want somebody that's got a good reputation, somebody that clients are happy with, et cetera, et cetera. And you want somebody who is educated. Okay. Now that is not discounting the life coaches. There are some amazing life coaches at Susanna Quintana, Susanna Quintana.com. She's my go-to girl. She's the one I go, okay, you're outside of Arizona. Let me send you to her because she's the one that can help you. There's also Leslie Rowan, another life coach, Rick Point, another life coach. Amazing. They've educated themselves. And Rick's specialty is addiction. And so he really gets the whole being addicted to somebody. So he's out of Iowa, I believe. Um, so you want somebody who is educated themselves, has gone out of the way and has really, really done the work and knows what they're doing, understands where you're coming from, doesn't shame, blame, guilt trip, power trip, whatever. I'm, I'm amazed at the number of people writing in and going, oh my God, this therapist said this to me and I'm freaking out. And I'm like, oh my God, I'd be freaking out too. So yeah. So you want to find a good trauma therapist. Now, any of the modalities are fine. CBT is what I do, cognitive behavioral therapy. There's also DBT, which is also a good behavioral therapy. There is EMDR, there's EFT, there's you name it that's out there. So you just got to find one that works for you. So when you are looking to find people to listen to, you are going to get conflicting information because everybody's perspective is different. Okay. My perspective is probably different than say Kim Saeed's or, uh, you know, uh, Shahida's or, you know, whatever we've had different experiences and what works is what we know works. So we're going to have slightly varying views on things. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to start listening to your gut. What resonates with you? When you read an article, what resonates with you? What feels right and what feels off? And let me give you a really good example of this. I post a lot of stuff on the Facebook page from Elephant Journal. And a lot of the stuff on Elephant Journal is really good. But occasionally, I will come across an article where I just start reading it and I'm like, uh-uh, 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 who the hell wrote this shit? And then I'll go read up on the biography and... Oh, recovering narcissist. Oh, self-aware narcissist. No, no such thing. Bye-bye. Delete. Not sending that out into the general public. Thanks for playing. So you want to read up on, you know, first of all, you want to trust your gut. If you're reading something and something starts feeling really off or starts feeling familiar in a really icky way, trust your gut gut. Okay. So right now I've been hearing that there's a lot of contention about gray rock, you know, don't gray rock, don't gray rock. Okay. Bullshit. Gray rock. Why? Because when you're out of the relationship, out of the relationship, it will save you. It will, because the narcissist is never going to stop coming at you as long as you're giving them narcissistic supply. Other people have said, no, 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 don't ever gray rock, it's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Well, when you're in the relationship, yeah, you may or may not want to be gray rocking, it depends. So you have to kind of figure this out for yourself. But if you're out of the relationship, absolutely you're going to gray rock this person. Why? Because you owe them goose eggs. You don't owe them anything. Do not give them emotional supply. So, and, and it's funny to me when I hear somebody who is damning all of the healing things that the rest of us are teaching, and then it turns out that that person has probably got issues of their own. So you want to research, has this person got a reputable reputation? Do they have a degree from a real university? Have they ever been arrested for anything? Do they have multiple personality disorders in their past? These are not people you want to be taking advice from. I'm sorry, you just don't. So, and you want to look to real educators. So, for example, Abdul Saad, Virtual Mind Psychology. And John's going to be putting all of this stuff up here. So, Virtual Mind Psychology. I love him. He's a PhD. He is short. He is to the point. He explains it. He's, you know, he's science-based, which I love. Um, there's Dana Morningstar. She's on uh, Thrive After Abuse on YouTube. There is Susanna Quintana, SusannaQuintana.com, and here's her book. I'll do that, okay? She's been there, done that, okay? Same with Shahida. So she's been there, done that, and she continually pits up with bullies. I, I, I'm amazed at the amount of bullying this person gets. I'm like, what the fuck? So, yeah, she's amazing. I love her. Um, there's also Pete Walker. 
CPTSD from <laughs> Surviving to Thriving. Pete Walker has also worked with Richie Granin. So Richie Granin is another good one. He's been immensely helpful in helping some of my male clients. So yeah, I mean, but you just have to feel it out, okay? You have to trust your gut. You have to go, does this resonate with me? Okay. The other thing, uh, the self-esteem workbook by mm, Glenn Schiraldi. Great workbook. You know, it, it works guys. It works. And it's so funny because it's like when my clients are like, you know, I didn't believe you about self-esteem. I thought it was a load of shit, blah, blah, blah. But then I started doing the mirror work and I started doing the self-esteem workbook and I got a schedule and I got, you know, a routine and I did this and boy, my life has really improved. And I'm like, that's great. Of course, I've been telling you this for a year and a half, but okay, it works. Go you. Do you see where I'm going? So yeah, I mean, who else? Randy Krieger, Splitting. She also wrote um, Stop Walking on Eggshells, which is about how to deal with somebody with borderline personality disorder. Bill Eddy is an attorney who is also a social worker. We need more attorneys that are social workers. Swear to God and all that's holy. Don't get me started. So, you know, people like this. And then, of course, you've got my books, you know. I'm a licensed professional counselor. I have been there. I have done that. These are available on Amazon. I also do the reading for them on Audible. Okay. So, so basically when you start reading something, you want to make sure that it resonates with you. So if you read something and you feel great, that's your article. But you also want to read up on who the author is. Who wrote this? What is their agenda? What, what are they, you know, especially like when I've seen the ones on, on, uh, elephant journal where they're like recovering narcissist. I'm like, uh, uh, mm -mm. no, I knew there was something off about this. Okay. You know, so you want to read up on who is the author. Now, another great source of information. Okay. Where am I? Uh, okay. Suzanne, Sarah Picaro, re dash, right dash, your dash life.com. She has been there, done that. Excuse me. She's been there, done that. Um, Lisa A. Romano breakthrough life coach. Um, Richie Grannon, Richard Grannon, um, Melanie Tanya Evans. I don't always agree with everything she says, but she's pretty right on. I like her a lot. She is a little out there, but you know, she's got some good stuff. You just, you don't swallow everything whole. Okay. You just don't, you see what resonates with you, you, you out there in YouTube land, you know better how to heal yourself than anyone else on the face of the planet does, including me, including therapists, including psychologists, including psychiatrists. Why? Because it's in there. You, you know it. You just need a little nudge and a little guidance and a roadmap for how to get from point A of abuse to point Z of zest for life. You know what I'm saying? So it's really, it's trusting your gut. It's reading things. It's researching. Who are you listening to? And here's the other thing. Okay, the DSM-5, get the DSM-5, read up on Cluster Bs. It's fascinating. You know, you can also go to mayoclinic.com and you can look up, um, you can put in Mayo Clinic NPD and it'll bring up the Mayo Clinic and it will have all of the criteria for the NPD. And then you could do BPD, you can do ASPD, antisocial. You know, it will have all of those in there. So read. Absolutely. But do trusted sources, you know, scientific sources. And if you're reading one that is not from a scientist, not from a, a counselor, not from a social worker, not from somebody who's, you know, in the field, trust your gut. If it feels weird, if it feels off, chuck it out. If I say something that feels weird or something that's off, chuck it out. You got to start trusting your gut. Does that make sense? So, you know, okay, who else? Um, Melanie Tani, Shahida, uh, Self Care Haven on YouTube, uh, Kim Saeed on YouTube, Psychology Today. That's where I get a lot of my articles from. They are from counselors. They are from PhDs. They are from, you know, licensed social workers. They're from, you know, people been there, done that. There's also Counseling Today, which is a magazine. Um, so really, we never wanted this. We... <laughs> We never wanted this. We did not wake up one day and say, hey, I'd really love to be an expert in cluster bees. I really would love to just spend all my time studying, 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 trying to figure this out. We, we, that's not what we intended. Absolutely. And then we end up getting the degree because we're trying to find answers and there is nothing wrong with that. I do think you should educate yourself. Education is key. Education is power. Education will prevent 
you know, self-awareness and education will prevent you from getting involved with another one as long as you apply all the stuff that you're learning, right? Inner Child Workbook by Katherine Taylor. That's another great one. Uh, the Disease to Please by Harriet Breaker. That's another great one. You want to get with people that have written things... Uh, Object of My Affection is In My Reflection, Coping with a Narcissist by Roquel Lerner. Fantastic book. I mean, that's the one that I recommend to people coming in going, this, 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 and this is happening. I don't understand why is this happening. And then I'll go read this book and tell me what you think. They'll read the book. They'll come back and they'll go, holy crap. This person is doing everything that they said in the book. Okay, now we know what we're dealing with. We're dealing with narcissistic abuse. Okay, now we can move forward. Now we can start fixing things for you. We cannot fix things for the other person, but we can start helping build your, your base up so that your self-esteem is rock solid, so that you're not codependent, so that you're not playing into the games of the narcissist, which is the intermittent positive rewards. So this is why education is really important. This is why you really almost do have to get uh, your PhD in psychology and at least in cluster B's and figuring out who, what, when, where, how, why, how they act, why it hooks us, right? Which is the codependency inner child stuff, poor self-esteem, you know, family of origin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and start dealing with all of that so that we don't go out into the world and immediately fall into another one. And that is unfortunately what ends up happening if we go, Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't want to take a look at the pink elephant taking a shit in the corner. No, no, there's no pink elephant. Uh, uh. And so it goes subconscious, right? And then what do we do? We run out and we find another goddamn pink elephant. We do. Because we're still trying to work through that original wound. We're still trying to work through whatever was going on with that boss or going on with that friend or going on with that romantic partner or that sibling or whatever. So. Basically, yes, you are going to get your PhD <laughs> unofficially in psychology. You are, and you should. There is, it drives me crazy that so many psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors, etc., try to treat this like it should be some sort of mystery, that the, that the client shouldn't know anything, you know, that they shouldn't be educated and all this. I've actually heard some professors say that, and I'm sitting there looking at them going, mm, I see why you're out of private practice. Oh, boom. Yeah, I did say that. So do you see where I'm going with that? So it's really education is the key. You got to know what the fuck was going on over there, but then you have to start educating yourself about what the fuck was going on over here. How did this happen? What was it in my makeup that created me looking for a substitute for mom and dad or whatever was going on. How do I fix that? Right? So that's why all of these books that I recommend all the time are super important. And it's really, really, really important that, you know, I, I don't mesh with everybody guys. I am blunt as all living fuck. You know that. So if somebody needs somebody that's a little softer, go try somebody else. It's perfectly okay to go explore other people's websites and other people's YouTube channels. And there's lots of great information out there. I just listed off a whole bunch of them. So yeah, it's perfectly okay to go look and go explore and go find because maybe the way I'm saying it is not going to make it for you, but maybe the way that somebody else is saying it is going to reach you. So yeah, you are for that first two years, you're going to be educating yourself on all of the different things. You're going to be looking for all of this stuff, but you have to be extremely careful. Be very wary of any article or any person who touts themselves as the way and the answer. Hello, cult, you know, and be very wary of any article that doesn't feel right. You know, research who wrote it. What's going on with that? Are they, an, are they a recovering narcissist, which there is no such critter, you know? So you've got to be very, 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 careful about where you get your information from you know and that's this is the other thing it really is the counselor's job it, this is our job this is our job this is what we should be doing so for any of you prospective counselors out there listen to me now believe me later we should be educating the living fuck out of our clients as to what is going on with them so when somebody comes to me 
with depression or anxiety, I educate the fuck out of them as to why that is happening when somebody has an anger issue. Okay, well, let's talk about fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Let's talk about repressed feelings. Let's talk about, you know, and I give them the tools so that when they start getting angry, they can take a deep breath and they can calm themselves, soothe themselves, because now they understand physically what's going on. So for therapists that just, you know, uh uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh huh, kind of gray rocking, isn't it? Uh, and then that'll be three hundred and fifty dollars. Fuck that shit. You need to educate your clients. You need to be out there teaching them as much as you possibly can, and you want to help them start trusting their gut. Absolutely, that is the big thing I think that is the danger for so many of us is that when we come out of this abusive relationship. We don't trust ourselves. We don't trust anybody else. And so when we start reading articles and they conflict, we don't, we're not able to get that immediate alarm bell that goes, ooh, this doesn't feel right. I need to check out and see who wrote this. I need to see who the author is and what their agenda is. Do you see where I'm going with that? You guys, it's okay to have curiosity and it's okay to check out authors. It's okay to check out YouTube personalities. It's okay to kind of feel it out and see who, what, when, where, how, why. What's the agenda? You know, or do they have a pure heart or do they not? You know, what's going on with that? So, yeah, you have the right to check all that stuff out. So, for example, you know, when I was going through school, I had a professor that clearly, and I've talked about this before, hated his clients, hated them, hate, capital H, hated them, and would say frequently how he was so glad that he was out of private practice and teaching. And I'm like, nah, you need to get out of teaching too. But it's like anything that that professor said, I took it not just with a grain of salt, I took it with a dump truck full of salt. It was like, mm, yeah, no, mm, no, guess what, motherfucker? I am going to be using humor in my counseling. Oh, by the way, I am also going to be swearing. Fuck you. So, my dryer is going off. Anyway, so that is, you know, something to think about. It's like, it's like when somebody's in the helping profession, they would be wise or you would be wise to make sure that they are in it for the right reasons, that they're here to help, that they're not here for ego, that they're not here for money, that they're not here for fill in the blank. You know, it's like, and the same goes for any article you're going to read. And that's why I like psychology today because it's mostly PhDs that are doing the writing. There's a few LSWs, there's a few count, you know, LPCs, that type of thing. So yeah, you want to check your sources. And yes, you are going to get your, your master's or your, your doctorate in personality disorders and in self-esteem and in, you know, codependency and in everything else. But then at the end of learning all of this stuff and incorporating all of this stuff and applying all of this stuff, you need to start stepping away from it. Unless, of course, you're going to go on and become a counselor yourself, which some people are. Some people, you know, they go through these horrific divorces, horrific situations and family things. And then they go, you know what? I can help other people. <sighs> Great. Do it. So, you know, it, it, but if you're not going to go on and become a life coach, if you're not going to go on and become a therapist or a counselor or a guide or whatever, then you need to start kind of stepping it away. You, you don't want to be indoctrinating yourself with all of this stuff about narcissism 24 seven, you really don't, you want to start living your life and you want to start trusting your gut and incorporating what you have learned and knowing that you've got the source of information. You've got all of these wonderful books, all of these amazing people behind you, you know, that, you know, you can turn to at any time and you've got it. And you don't need to keep living it and reliving it and reliving it. Like I said, unless, of course, you are planning on becoming a licensed professional counselor, a life coach, getting your PhD, like for reals in psychology, et cetera. So you do want to find some balance. And, and it is normal. I just want to make this clear that when we come out of an abusive relationship, we are obsessed. We absolutely because it is so mind numbingly bizarre that this person who came across as prince or princess charming could go from amazing, wonderful, kind, gentle, 
you know, perfect person to not today, Satan, you know, it blows our mind and we're trying to make sense of it and we're trying to make logic of it. And the only way to make logic and sense of it is to educate ourselves and read up on all of this stuff. But then once you have, it's really important to start stepping away from it unless you're going to become a counselor because you need your life back. You do. And that's great that you've got the psychology degree you never wanted because you can pass on that knowledge when you see other people suffering. And that is our job. So if we've got knowledge and we see somebody else suffering, we can go, um, hey, you, you might want to you might want to read this book or this book or, you know, self-esteem workbook. You know, we can give our knowledge to other people. But then it's really important for us to realize, OK, we've learned all that we can learn right? We, we get it. We know why they did what they did. We understand why we did what we did. And now our task is to live our lives to the fullest. And I mean, the fullest. I cannot tell you the number of times I have arguments with people where they're like, no, no, revenge is the best. And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, no, you're giving them narcissistic supply. The worst punishment you can give a narcissist is to ignore them. They do not exist. You exist. You get to live your life. You get to go have fun. You get to figure out who you are and what you want. And you get to be joyful. Holy crap. Wouldn't that be nice? How many years did we suffer with this horrible person, whether it was a boss or a romantic partner, a sibling, a parent, whatever? How many years did we suffer, right? And put ourselves into the tiniest little box possible so that we wouldn't get harmed? Well, now it's time to pry the edges off that box and come flying out and have a wonderful life. Really have a wonderful life. Go explore who you are. What did you like to do when you were a kid? So we go from getting our PhD in narcissism. Now I want you to get your PhD in who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What do you want? What do you want to do? And it's, 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 common that people will say, oh, it's too late for me. I'm too old. And they're in their thirties. I'm like, oh, please, honey. I didn't go back to get my master's degree until I was 38. I didn't write my first book until I was 45. And then I wrote my second book when I was in my fifties. Hello. And I'm writing a third and a fourth and I'm 55. So it's never too late. If there is breath in your body and a desire to go do something new, y'all can do it. Y'all can do it. Don't give me that bullshit. You're too old. Motherfucker, I am going to be learning new shit until the day I drop fucking dead. I swear to God, I'm going to go out with a book in my hand. I am. So you know what I'm saying? It's like, go find you. I want you to get your next doctorate in who you are, what you want. Do you want to go back to school? I think that's fucking exciting. I really do. Why is my thing doing that? Where is my noise thing? There we go. There we go. So, you know, I think it's fucking exciting when clients tell me, oh my God, um, I'm thinking about going back to school. What do you think? And I'm just sitting there going, yes. You know, it's like, do it. Do, write that book. Do that blog. Write that article. If there's bad articles out there, which there are, write your own. Seriously, Elephant Journal is always looking for artists. Artists, well, that too. Authors. So, you know, write. Write. The worst that can happen is they say no. Okay, so they said no. Somebody else will say yes. So write. Write it out. Be creative. Be you. I want you guys to be the best damn you that you can fucking be. I want you to get your next PhD in who you are. What do you want in fun? I want you to do it in fun. I'm going to get my PhD in fun, bitches. I love that. Do it. Find out who you are. What do you want? I think it was Carl, mm, Carl Jung. Yes. Carl Jung said, do what made the hours pass like minutes when you were a kid. Do that. Okay. Great. Do that. So whether that's painting or being an author or being creative or hiking or whatever, go do it. The things that your abuser said, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. You don't know. No, 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 no. You can't do that. I want you to go out and prove those motherfuckers wrong. Seriously. So like when I got my master's degree, remember my dad was always like, you're the cute one, not the smart one. And you know, <laughs> it's kind of like when I got home with my certificate, I was like, see the certificate, daddy? Yeah, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh-uh, motherfucker. You told me I couldn't do it and I fucking did it. Fuck you. Do you see where I'm going with that? It feels immensely freeing 
to do the very thing that your abuser was always like, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. And the reason they do that is because they're terrified you're going to outdo them. They are terrified you are going to be successful and live a good life without them. That is their biggest fear. They do not want us to move on. They do not want us to heal. They do not want us to forget them. They deserve anonymity so richly. Seriously, move on, become a PhD in you. Who are you? What do you want? What do you like? What would you like to be doing? You know, if you're not doing something you like, what would you like to be doing? And how can we get from point A to point zestful? Zest for life. So, all right. So, all right. So, okay. We were coming up on the 1230. Okay. So I'm going to start answering questions. Okay. Uh, can you offer advice to help me stop catastrophizing? Okay. This is common. So we... I think all of us who have survived a, a narcissistically abusive relationship, we catastrophize. We totally catastrophize. We always do the disaster report. My sister always called it the disaster report. Well, what's the disaster report? So it's a way, a maladaptive way of trying to keep us safe. It's a maladaptive way of trying to predict the future. It's a maladaptive way of, you know, okay, I'm going to say, what if, what if, what if, what if? So the problem with catastrophizing is it takes us out of the present moment and we are not now living in the present moment. We are living in a nightmare landscape in our head of oh, what if, 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 okay, I'll do this if that happens and, and I'll do that if that happens and, and, and if this happens, I'm going to do that. You're not in the present moment. You're, you're living in a future that has not and probably will not occur. So catastrophizing is part of the what if, what if, what if, what if. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to start working on anxiety because that is part of the anxiety because we're trying to control. We're trying to control. So the more, the more craziness we went through, the more we try to control everything around us, right? To try to stay safe. It's a maladaptive way of trying to stay safe. So I would get a uh, anxiety workbook and I would start working it. And I would notice every single time you hear, what if, what if, what if, thank you for your input. Shut the fuck up. Why? Because you're the boss. You are the boss of this. This is not the boss of you. And I will take that a step further. Who taught you to catastrophize? For me, it was my mom. My mom was in a constant state of panic and fear. Why? Because my father was an abusive asshole. So you got to start digging back and figuring out where did this come from? Okay, why, where did I start the catastrophizing? What age was that? Then you get the Catherine Taylor book, Catherine Taylor book, inner child workbook. How old were you? How old do you feel when you start catastrophizing? So it's a matter of stopping it. You're going to do thought stopping. Okay, a thought pops up. What if, what if, what if? Thank you for your input. Shut the fuck up. Why? Because I say so. I am not going to live in a future that has not happened yet. Thanks for playing. Why? Because I say so and I am the boss. Fuck off. Seriously, you're going to have to challenge it. So what you might also do is write down the catastrophe thoughts and then do another column where you challenge them. That's another good way to do it because you want to get it out of your head and onto paper. So that's something to think about. And what you're going through is common. Almost all of us who have come out of an abusive relationship have got that panic or that catastrophe what if what if what if what if going on because we've it's been taught to us and it's a way of trying to stay safe but it doesn't keep us safe all it does is keep us from the present moment and enjoying what's going on right here right now so yeah it's really important stay in the present moment stay in the present moment so i would strongly suggest getting with a therapist to work on that to help you stay in the present moment and to be able to counter it when it happens so that you're not out of the present moment all the time. So get with a good therapist, start working on that, get the Catherine Taylor, per get a uh, anxiety workbook and challenge, challenge it, write it out, get it one line of the catastrophe and the next line challenging what's going on. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. Where is my cursor? There it is. Um, okay. Uh, my narcopath keeps lying to me, but I can't prove it. They blame me for seeking the truth basically. How do I move on without the truth? Okay, so here's the thing. This is why I say 
if you are, if you're leaving a narcissist, if you're leaving an abuser of any kind, and it's a divorce or whatever, you want everything in writing. You want to stop talking to them on the phone. I cannot emphasize this enough because why? They will say whatever the fuck they want to, but then when, you know, the rubber meets the road, they're going to deny that they ever said it. So you want to get everything in writing. You want to get everything written out. You want to get everything on paper, you know, and you don't want to be talking to them on the phone because they're going to be getting narcissistic supply from that. That's why, oh my God, I was watching, it's called The Unexplained and it's with Bill Shatner speaking of possible narcissists. Um, but uh, it's a great thing and it talks about all the unexplained things that happen in the world, but they've got scientists on there that talk about it. And so one of the things they talked about was cults. So if you have not seen that episode, I strongly suggest you go watch it. So it's the unexplained with Bill Shatner and it's on cults and they talk about the different cults. And in one section, they talked about the cult of one, in other words, an abusive relationship and how this little dancer got involved with this maestro dancer and they started a sexual relationship and then she ended up killing herself basically at his behest. And remember, like I said, narcissists want us dead. Ultimately, they want their target dead, either literally or figuratively, either soul dead or physically dead. That's why they do things like, you know, insist that the partner is, and this is what happened with this little girl, insisted that she was too fat. And so she stopped eating, basically, and she, she died. So, um, yeah. So it's a great episode and it explains cults and it explains narcissists really well. So the thing of it is, is they're always going to lie. They're always going to lie. If their lips are moving, they're lying. That's just the way that narcissists are. So they're going to say whatever. Okay. So let's say that it's not a, a, a marriage. Let's say that you're not, you know, divorcing or whatever. And it's just a relationship that it's breaking up. They're going to go tell their story to whoever, and you have absolutely no control over it. Mm, I know that sucks, but we have no control over what they say. We have no control over whether or not people are going to believe that or not. And let me tell you something. If someone is willing to believe the worst of you after they've known you for years, they are not your friend. They are not your friend. If they are willing to believe the worst of you after having known you for years, they are not your friend. So you can't stop them from lying. You cannot stop the flying monkeys from believing the smear campaign. You, you can't, the best thing that you can do, write it out, get it out of your head, get it onto paper, right? Dear, dear abuser, you did this, 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 here's the good, the bad, the ugly, the horrific. You know what, motherfucker? I'm raising the rent. You don't get to live in my head rent-free one more second. You can lie yourself straight to hell and those fuckers can believe you. And guess what? I no longer care. Have a nice life. And by that, I mean, go fuck yourself and then trot it out to the barbecue, read it out loud once and then burn it. So really it's, yeah, you're, they're lying. They're going to say whatever they're going to say. And yeah, you gotta, you gotta let it go, babes, because what you're doing is you're hanging on to the relationship by demanding that they speak the truth. That's the same as me hanging on to the anger about my dad. So it's a way to keep the relationship alive and still going. So let it go, babes. Let it go. The be let them have the anonymity that they so richly deserve. Does that make sense? So yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Do we have any other questions on that? I don't think so. Okay. Does, okay, guys, do you have, does anybody have any other questions? Because it looks to me like we're, we're kind of out of questions. Oh, wait a minute. Um, what do you think of people who keep believing their lies, their lies, uh, even they've been shown to be liars over and over again? Okay, so that's a flying monkey. So in other words, when somebody shows you who they are, okay, and they get caught in a lie, and then people believe them, and then they lie again, and then people believe them. It's like, okay, the flying monkeys are showing you who they are, okay, and, and narcissists are showing you who they are. And basically, you want to get the fuck away from all of these people as quickly as possible. It, you can't change them. You cannot fix them. You cannot heal them. You cannot make them better. You cannot. It's not your job. It's not your job. So you probably want to read The Disease to Please by Harriet Breaker. I would definitely get with a good therapist and figure out why that's bothering you so much. They're going to do what they're going to do. 
There, it, it, do you remember the story I always tell about the, the scorpion and the toad and how the scorpion says, Mr. Toad, take me across the river. And the toad says, no, you're going to sting me out in the middle of the river. And the scorpion says, no, I'm not going to. And the toad thinks about it and goes, okay. So the scorpion climbs on, they go out into the middle of the river and then I'll be damned. The scorpion stings him. And as they're both going down, the toad looks up at him and says, but why, why would you do that? Now we're both going to die. And he says, because it's in my nature. So the lying the guilt tripping, the blaming, the shaming, that is in their nature. That is their nature. They are, that is who they are. That's why I keep saying there is no recovering narcissist. There is no self-aware narcissist. This is who they are, like to the core, who they are. They're showing you who they are. So yeah, you've got to let that one absolutely go. Okay. Oh, more questions. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Any ways to deal with aging, possibly dying malignant narcissist mom who I've gone no contact with. So that's a really tough one. So when you're dealing with an aging narcissist, those are called collapsed narcissists. I did talk about it in uh, the Q and A that I did earlier this week. So aging narcissists are really difficult to deal with because they are pathetic. They are because when a narcissist gets older, they're pretty much alone. Nobody wants to be around them. They're not fun to be around. So, so people don't be around them. And so they are pathetic. And so they start pulling the whole, I'm alone. I'm lonely. You need to keep me company, blah, blah, blah. So here's the thing. If they didn't want to be alone, if they didn't want to be lonely, how about they not act like a fucking asswipe? So you got to deal with your own guilt. So any relationship that causes fear, obligation, or guilt is not a healthy relationship. So you've gone no contact, you stay no contact. You are under no obligation to provide comfort or anything else to this person unless you want to, but realize, again, toad, scorpion, it's in their nature. They're not going to suddenly be nice because they're dying. They're not going to be suddenly nice because they realize they're going to meet their maker. They're going to be defiant and they're going to be assholes and they're going to be mean and everything else that they were when they were younger. So um, you've got to deal with the guilt, I think is what, I think that's what you're asking me. Um, so you, you stay no contact. You're under no obligation to have contact with any abuser. I don't care what their situation is. I don't care if they're dying. I don't care if they're, you know, supposedly had a, a moment of clarity. I've heard that one too. Um, oh, a moment of clarity. Oh, I, I realized my evil ways. And then they go right back into what they were doing. No, they haven't had a moment of clarity. They got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. So um, no, you stay no contact and you deal with your guilt. Get with a good therapist to work on that. You owe this person nothing. You, you don't, unless you want to go. Now, if you for yourself, feel you need to have contact with them, you can do that. But with the caveat of they are probably going to act exactly the way they've acted your entire life. And there's a reason you went no contact with them. So just be aware. So, you know, it, just be aware and, and don't expect a miracle. So that's the big thing. Uh, where is a good place to look up dark triad information? So dark triad information is they are antisocial personality disorder with Machiavellian, with, which is a control freak. And that is uh, coupled with narcissism. So you can find dark triad stuff all over the internet. You know, so basically, as long as they are talking about, and that is also malignant narcissists. So as long as they are talking about the antisocial part of it, the control freak part of it, and the narcissism part of it, it's probably okay answers. It's okay, good answers. Um, the one that I really loved in the explanation of that was Richard Granin. So Richard Granin had a really good explanation of dark triads. So you might want to look to his website for that. So there's that. Uh, I stopped enjoying my downtime because of my narc, and my brain is always in to-do mode, common totally common. I just want to validate that. How do I start enjoying my own downtime more? Okay. <sighs> Lord. So narcissists can't stand people having fun at all, period. They can't stand anyone relaxing or sleeping. Why? Because if they can keep them on their toes and walking on eggshells and not sleeping and not taking naps and not reading and not relaxing and not refilling their pot, 
that target is more easily manipulated. That is why they do that. So we get stuck in this, what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta do, to do, gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta, 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 gotta. And it's because of how our abuser would do that. Now, my dad, for example, when we went up to a cabin that we had up around Lassen, he <laughs> would never allow any of us to just sit and read or sit and watch the mountains or have a nice cup of coffee and enjoy the cool. He would start his chainsaw, I kid you not, at 5 a.m. And he would demand that we all be out there picking up little tiny sticks to burn in the fireplace. And, and that went on all day. And if one of us rebelled and went and sat down, he would come stand over us and tell us how lazy we were and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So why? Well, because if we're exhausted all the time, we're easier to control. That's why they do it. So one way to do that is write it out. How did your abuser control you when you were trying to get downtime? How did they interrupt your resting? How did they interrupt your play? How did they make you wrong for not do, 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 do? Call them out on it. Write them a go fuck you letter. Trot it out to the barbecue. Read it out loud once. Burn it. Absolutely. What's the biggest differences in BPD versus narcissism? All right. Okay. All right. Good thing I have the book right here. All right. So, hold on. All right. Doop, doop, doop. Got the DSM-5. All right. So, borderline. Oh, now I got to put my glasses on. Ah! Hang on. Hang on. All right. All right. So, this is the criteria for borderline. Pervasive pattern of instability of interpersonal relationships, self-image and affects, and marked impulsivity, very impulsive, beginning in early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts as indicated by five or more of the following. One, frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. Two, a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating extremes of idealization and devaluation. Three, identity disturbance, marked and persistently unstable sense of self or self-image. Four, impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. Spending, sex, substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating, gambling. Five, recurrent suicidal behavior, gestures, or threats, or self-mutilating behavior. Six, Effective instability due to marked reactivity of moods, intense dysphoria, irritability, or anxiety, usually lasting a few hours and only rarely more than a few days. So mood swings, basically. Seven, chronic feelings of emptiness. Eight, inappropriate, intense anger, difficulty controlling anger, frequent displays of temper, constant anger, recurring physical fights. Nine, Transient stress-related paranoid ideation or severe dissociative symptoms. Okay, that was borderline. Hold on, let me find. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me find narcissism and you will see the difference. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, narcissistic personality disorder. A pervasive pattern of grandiosity, grandiose, gra grandiose in fantasy or behavior, need for admiration and lack of empathy, beginning by early adulthood and present in a variety of contexts as indicated by five or more of the following. You only need five, there's nine. So the more traits they have, the more malignant they are. One, has a grandiose sense of self-importance, exaggerates achievements and talents and expects to be recognized as superior without commiserate achievements. Two, is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Three, believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other high or special high status people or institutions. Four, requires excessive admiration, constantly having to tell them how great they are, constantly, constantly, constantly. Five, has a sense of entitlement, unreasonable expectations of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with his or her expectations. Six, is interpersonally exploitive, takes advantage of others to achieve his or her own ends. Seven, lacks empathy, is unwilling to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. Eight, is often envious of others and believes that others are envious of him or her. Nine, shows arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. So those are the differences. 
Hope that answered the question. Okay. Uh, best workout, what workbooks, workouts. <laughs> best workbooks, sorry, for beginners and narcissistic parents. I would say get uh, The Object of My Affection. It's not a workbook. It's just a book. Uh, the Object of My Affection is in my reflection coping with a narcissist. And where did it, where did Pete Walker go? Oh, God. Oh. CPTSD from Surviving to Thriving by Pete Walker. Get it. It's awesome. Um, so if the parents were narcissistic, you're going to go through this book. You're also going to go through Catherine Taylor's uh, Inner Child Workbook to start working through all of that. Uh, what do you recommend for healing when you cannot afford a therapist? Okay. I have a list of all the books, seriously, on my YouTube. No, no, not YouTube. Facebook, Facebook page. And uh, I list them all out. And there's tons more that I haven't even talked about. So like uh, Bessel van der Kolk, uh, The Body Keeps Score. That's a great one. Um, Pete, Pete, uh, oh no, shoot. Is it Pete Tipping? Pete Tipping, uh, Radical Forgiveness, um, Tara Brock, uh, Radical Acceptance. Um, there's tons of books. So I've got it listed on my Facebook page. I think it's under the notes section. And so there's just a ton of books there. So you start reading, you start reading, you educate yourself. If you cannot get to a therapist, you educate yourself. You find educators here on YouTube and you start listening to them. So like Abdul Saad is amazing. He's great. I love him. Lisa A. Romano. She's amazing. Shahida is amazing. It's, you know, it's, they're all amazing. So find one you like, start listening, go for it. You know, just educate yourself, educate, 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 read as much as you possibly can. Um, and journaling, journaling is going to be your friend. I know everybody looks at me and they're like, Oh, I don't want to journal. It's stupid. Okay. Journaling is good. And here's why. Our amygdala is stupid. It really is. Three O's. It cannot tell the difference between a real threat or a thought about a real threat. It also cannot tell the difference between writing a letter and having actually talked to the person. Do you see where I'm going with that? So what you're going to do is you're going to get it out of your head. You're going to get it onto paper. You're going to read it through once and then you're going to burn it. Or you're going to keep it so that you can work through whatever came up. So journaling is just kind of a roadmap for you. It's like, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are your automatic thoughts? What are you constantly telling yourself? That's where the self-esteem ah, workbook comes in handy. What are your automatic thoughts? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you telling yourself on a daily basis? This is why I recommend mirror work, mirror work, looking in the mirror, looking at yourself. If looking at yourself is too painful, because for some of us it is, then I just want you to say it out loud to yourself. Hi, me. So good to hear you. Wow, I want you to have a great day. I give you permission to like yourself and I give yourself permission to look in the mirror at some point and like what you hear. Okay, that's what I want you to do. If you can look in the mirror. Hi, good to see you. Have a great day. I give you permission to like yourself and then walk out. See where I'm going with that? And then at night, three things that you did right. What did you do right that day? Because how often do our abusers just love to rub our nose in every single goddamn thing we did supposedly wrong, right? So we don't. We don't ever tell ourselves what we did right. We keep waiting for somebody outside of us to tell us that we did something right. No, that's other esteem. I want you to start telling yourself things that you did right for you. What did you do right today? Great, you got up, fantastic. You did your mirror work, awesome. You got to work on time, fantastic. Of course, right now the commute time is from like the bedroom to the, you know, the kitchen table. But, you know, it's like you give yourself praise for the things that are going right, things that you've done well, things that you are proud of. You have a right to feel good about that. And that's something that somebody else brought up is how the abusers constantly take away our joy and constantly take away our ability to, enjoy things that we've done right or things that we're proud of because they ruin it. They ruin it because we can't be better than them. So yeah, absolutely. I want you to start reading the books. I want you to start watching all the different channels, get whatever you can, find the people that you like the most, stick with those, go through those, learn, 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 and then apply. Journal, 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 write it out. Notice, oh, wow, that's interesting. Here I am out in public and I'm self-conscious because the voice in my head is saying, you're not good enough. You're not this, you're that, da, 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 what if, what if, what if, 
thank you for your input. Shut the fuck up. Why? Because I say so, because I'm the boss, not you. I am good enough. Thank you. And I will not live in a future that has not happened. Thanks for playing. Bye-bye. So you practice. You practice all this stuff. And all of these books have got, you know, like the Pete Walker's got stuff that you work on. You know, the CPTSD from Surviving to Thriving, the Self-Esteem Workbook, it's it's a workbook. You know, the Disease to Please, it's got little tests that you take and things that you talk about and write it out and figure out what's going on. So yeah, you can do it without a therapist. It is easier with a therapist, but yeah, it can be done. It's not impossible. So, you know, and really a therapist is really good for when you're stuck. So when you're stuck means that you're moving backwards. So... When you're moving forwards, you're not stuck. But when you're stuck, it feels like you're moving backwards. So that's when a therapist is good to kind of give you that nudge to get up out of that muddy bog and get up and over and, and help you push through. So so there that is. Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, I think we're good. All right, kids. Well, have a great week. Um, next week, I wanted to talk about oversharing. So this is something that all of us do, and this is dangerous. We need to talk about why. So we're going to talk about some skills, some, some communication things that we've learned that are not healthy, that we need to break so that we can be safe moving out of an abusive relationship and moving forward in our lives so that we can live our best life. Because if we're constantly oversharing, somebody is constantly going to be trying to sabotage. So let's talk about that next week. All right, kids, be good. Have a wonderful day. And I will probably talk to you later this week with uh, any questions that I didn't get to. And I'll see you next week about oversharing. Bye.